Good evening and welcome to tonight's um, reminder, please turn off cell phones. And before we start, if you'd all stand in front of me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky, myself here. Treasurer Brandstamp. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Member McFarland. Here. Member Vander Kelly. Absent. Seven. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to the first item on the agenda, which is a new agenda item titled Board Member Resignation. And I'd like to write and read a letter. Uh, Dr. Carroll, I'm the Superintendent, Administration Building for the Michigan. Dear Dr. Sherrill, I hereby resign from my position as trustee of the MTS Board of Education, effective September 9th, 2013, due to other commitments that must take priority. It has been an honor and a privilege to be entrusted with the care and education of students of Midland. I am confident that you will do a brilliant job of leading our schools into the 21st century, and I thank my fellow board members for donating their time to volunteer for this worthy cause. Sincerely, Kimberly Vanderkellen. So, we have received resignation from Kim. Um, I would accept the motion to accept the resignation. I will move to accept the resignation resignation of Kimberly Vanderkellen as drafted. Support. President Wasserman? Yes. Vice President Baker? Yes. Secretary Kaminsky? Myself? Yes. Tre Treasurer Brandstamp? Yes. Member Gordon? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. Member Van McKellen? Yes. So 6-0. Thank you. Uh, we accept, hereby accept that resignation of uh, Ms. Van McKellen and we thank her for her months of service and for her interest in the kids of our district. With that, we'll move on to Do the next item on the agenda, which is Also, uh, recommended employment list. I move that we accept consent agenda items 3.1 through 3.5. Support. Uh, moved by Treasurer Branch and support by Member Gordon. Uh, uh, I think uh, I'll vote for the call and favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. At this point, we'll move on to requests to address the board. We have no formal requests. Uh, does anybody in the audience care to address the board? Seeing none. As we've been working on um, bringing some presentations to the board, um, we have our first one tonight, and I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Jeff Chester, principal at Northeast, and Mr. Poole, principal at Jefferson, to introduce our guest. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to come tonight. We're just going to share with all of you the, uh, the new program that's taking place at the middle schools after school, the ROCK program. And just a little background, this started last, sp uh, last spring as a trial. It was an eight-week period where both middle schools tried to um, really find opportunities for the kids who weren't connected to the school in some way through, you know, maybe your more traditional activities, sports, music programs, some other clubs, and we wanted to have a safe place for them to work, um, provide them, you know, supervision, give them, you know, a meal, a snack, and the eight-week program in the spring went really well. So this year, uh, we're happy to say that at both Northeast and Jefferson, the Rock program is going to be running for the entire year, and I'll let Mr. Poole add a little bit about how that's gone. 
It's going very well at Jefferson as well. I mean, it's yet another unique uh, community collaboration that we have with another, another organization. And um, I wasn't as part of it as much last spring, but this fall so far we've had a good turnout, and we uh, look forward to grow even more. We have, uh, I think, almost 20 students at Jefferson that are in the after-school program. So we're going to introduce Bev and Lori uh, to do a little PowerPoint for you. Well, good evening, and thank you for having us here. My name is Bev Wenzel. I'm the executive director of the Rock Youth Center. And the Rock is very excited to be partnering with Midland Public Schools Northeast and Jefferson to bring this program. Um, it all started probably in 2001 when we started serving youth of the community, and we did it on site in, um, on our Gordonville Road location serving predominantly Bullet Creek students. We wanted to expand that reach. But we have over 13 years experience of working with middle school and high school students. So we're very happy to say um, when we could partner here with the schools and bring those programs, those opportunities that we've had, the experience that we've learned to serving young people to your district. So we thank you very much for trusting us with that and welcoming us. The goals of the Rock when we work with young people is really to give them successful opportunities. We want them to be successful students. We want them to grow into successful adults. We pay close attention to the developmental assets and the goals of all of our programs are to work with the kids and help build developmental assets that will ensure their success and help lower risk-taking behavior during these troublesome years. We had begun to collaborate because we had found there's a contingency of students uh, particularly after school that will often linger around the building having no place to go or go home to an empty home and um, or be you know they're between sports and need something else that they want to commit to so we found that um, in collaborating with the rock with the intention that they had with the building the assets and and building character qualities it would be a great audience to reach some of these kids and um, with their desire to reach out to the schools and you know, our desire to reach the kids that we have, obviously, in our buildings, it couldn't have been a better opportunity for us to bring the programs together. So that's initially how that started. So when we ran the test pilot, the biggest complaint that we had, or possibly the only complaint we had, is that it was too short. And we actually ended it before 4 p.m., so we started every day after school and ran until about 4. In an effort to serve parents and meet the needs better, transportation after school is an issue. I mean, that's one of the big things. And, and we know a lot of children are home alone until 5, 5.30 in the evening. So what we wanted to be able to do is make sure we could fill that gap and not make the situation worse, but actually make it better. So what we decided to do in the schools, um, as we all sat together planning this year, is we decided it would run the 174 days of school. So every day after school, we close when there's a snow day, obviously. And it runs until 5.30 p.m. So parents can make arrangements if they don't get out of work till 5.30. We're happy to accommodate parents. Um, and again, the, the purpose is to create successful adults and successful students. So what happens in the program, the kids come in, they do get a snack. There's tutors. We're partnering with different places, including Northwood University, to provide tutors to the program. We also have homework help um, whenever there may not be tutors available. They're doing games, but games with a purpose. We do a lot of community building, a lot of group building, a lot of opportunities for the kids. Positive peers are very important. So we help connect the kids to other peers as well as positive adult mentors. And we become that trusted adult, sometimes the cool adult, um, that all students need. Great relationships with parents still require kids to have good positive adult role models outside of the family. So that's one of the roles that we fill. What we're trying to do, obviously, this program has um, a cost associated with it. Um, we've really tried to put our heads together to find a way to make this um, affordable or not a cost to the families. Um, we've been able to tap into our own resources with our staff to ask them to donate um, non-perishable food items to contribute to the snacks and they have been overwhelmed and joyed to bring in whatever they can because they know that this has been a problem for a long time and that this is going to be a great opportunity for both buildings and the kids. Um, 
the way that we get kids involved, it's very simple. Last year we did this pilot program, as Jeff Jester mentioned, um, you know, with the eight weeks. We started with a small group of about 25 to 30 kids, and those kids spoke for this program themselves. Um, a lot of them returned this year and spoke to how much fun it was for them. And, um, and then we just did a little bit of um, PR ahead of time with the open houses and the parent nights that have already been held, and we're, we're growing. And they are getting phone calls off the hook, so it's been a really great opportunity. Um, and then I'll, I'll let Bev talk about the specific um, registration process. We, we fully expect to serve um, probably a minimum of 50 students at each location. And we're not sure how far it's going to go past that. We're prepared to even let those numbers go bigger. We never want to turn a student away. We never want to turn them away because of ability to pay, as Lori mentioned, or because we're full. So, so we're going to work it out to accommodate as many of the kids as we possibly can. Um, when the kids come in, which one? OK. Um, in order to fund the program, part of the partnership uh, agreement that we had is that everybody was going to do the best they could but the Rock is out fundraising. We are happy to say that the Midland Area Community Foundation had granted us a request for $50,000 for this year to fund this program. So that is a great start. We have done one mailing to our donors and expanded that donor list, inviting support specific for this program. And the fee structure that we set up for the kids is pretty much $3 a day if you pre-register, $5 a day if you do a drop-in. And that fee is completely um, the parents can waive it just by making a phone call. If, if it's a financial burden on the families, that's fine. We are happy to waive that fee. But we are looking to the parents who can afford to help support the program to be part of making this program sustainable and that hopefully at some point this program will be able to completely fund itself. In the meantime, we will work on different fundraising efforts to be able to make the program sustainable. Um, I think that's it, unless anyone has any questions. Questions? Just comment. I was over at North a couple days last week, and it, it's exciting. It's new and it's growing, and um, thank you for doing that. Well, thanks for volunteering, Lynn. And there are many volunteer opportunities available, <laughs> if I could just leverage that. As Thank far as your, your fundraising goes, uh, what type of activities do you guys do? Is it on a weekly basis, monthly, quarterly? How does that work? That we fundraise? Yes. Well, we have a multi-leg multi -leg stool, whatever, approach to fundraising. So there's a lot of different components that we do. We have an annual fundraising dinner that we do to help bring in support for the organization as a whole. We do grant writing on a very regular basis. We have an individual donor base. Um, we do some uh, some events, different things like um, you can do like Kroger cards and we're going to do an online auction. Some of those are dedicated strictly to this program. A lot of them are for general operation funds for the ROC, which ultimately support this program if there isn't adequate funds for this program. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned that you had another location for the Bullock Creek students. Is that still in existence also? Is that program running now? That is still in existence, yes, ma'am, and that is at the Rock, the physical location of the Rock, which is on Gordonville Road. And because uh, the way that area is set up, they, the Bullet Creek Schools bus kids right to the Rock. So it, it works pr very similar to what we're doing at your schools. Just to get a flavor for magnitude, with 50 kids at each school, what's it cost to run a program per year? Well, um, a lot of the support will come in we recognize as in kind. Um, with 50 being the threshold, we expect it's going to be between 80 and $90,000 a year. For both locations? For, for actually all, th all three all locations. Okay. So, yeah. But the majority of that, uh, more than two thirds, is for the Midland Public area. I think at, at Northeast and at Jefferson, what we're trying to do is, is you know, this is a win-win for all of us. And so by having our staffs to contribute the food, that is a huge chunk, as you all know, if you're parents of any middle school aged <coughs> child, uh, that's an enormous cost. Um, so as our staffs bring in things, um, help to offset the cost plus, um, they're promoting the word of, you know, getting the kids involved. Um, at every opportunity and um, and just being in support of the program in their classrooms when they're you know 
they're knowing, you know, you can talk to this tutor about it tonight when you go to the RAC, or maybe you need some tutoring help, maybe you should consider joining the RAC or something along those lines. So it's something that some of our parents have been asking for for quite some time, but they haven't always been able to access for a variety of reasons, whether it's the tutoring or whether it's just help with supervision. Um, because what we've known historically is the kids that are lingering from three to five, you know, they may not have bad intentions initially, but ultimately they'll find cool. some things to get their hands into and it's not always good. So um, this is a great opportunity for us and it's really an answer to a lot of things that we needed. Can you give us some examples of some of the things that they do there, some of the activities they participate in or programs that they do? Or just sure, we have a very creative staff and we really want the kids to go home having had fun. Because let's face it, this age group is not going to come back unless they've had fun. Um, with that, we want to incorporate some very real learning opportunities. So along with the tutoring, you'll see what they call game, games with a purpose. So there's a lot of team building games, a lot of exploring type games. They're bringing in a science component that of course is built around fun, an art component. We are working with other organizations in the community to come in and do things um, to help spread their mission, to help share their mission, and, and educate youth on things that, that, that are relevant to them. So they'll bring in special activities or special little group things. Um, just a lot of games and a lot of playing. They were playing Spud the other day. I have no idea what Spud is. They, uh, that's just constantly on a move. And what they're doing is because we, we want to give kids opportunities to participate but not do any kind of forced participation. Again, with this age group, it's, it's really very different in an after-school program than what, what we would have experienced in elementary school. So when a student comes in, there's probably four or five different things going on at any time. So the kids do not have to participate. And there's one section they call just chilling. So if the kids just want to hang out, if they just want to visit, if they just want to talk, that's fine. One thing our staff is very good at is engaging students who might be on the fringe. So it's a really good opportunity for kids who maybe are having a little bit more difficult time connecting with their peers or are just kind of a little standoffish. Um, our staff will work extra hard to make sure those kids are engaged. And it really does a great job of, of building your group of students together because we start building friendships and relationships inside the students, in, in the group of students. And that spreads out through the whole school day and into everything they do and in fact their whole future school years. Have you found the age spread to be a challenge? The sixth through eighth yeah. grade? Now we find that to be great because we're not trying to do sixth through twelfth grade. <laughs> <laughs> sixth through twelfth is a challenge, but the sixth through eighth grade, you know, you do see the younger kids, especially at the beginning of the school year when they're very young sixth graders, you know, they're going to gravitate more to their own little groups. And that's one of the reasons why we offer a variety of activities for the kids because age is going to divide it up a little bit. Um, but again, that's what our staff has worked with for, for 13 years. So they've kind of got that all worked out. Thanks to the administrator for being involved. I mean, you guys have taken some really good, well-proven facts. Legacy Center, I think some of the buzzwords were quoted, the Legacy Center yeah. helps build upon and reinforce that it's a really good program and great intervention. And you'll never know how many kids you affect you never know how many things you prevent mm -hmm. by kids being uh, positive, under, positive role models and so forth. So just appreciate you guys with the effort. Thank you. And, and if I could just make a, a positive comment here. We're really impressed with Midland Public Schools. You guys are being great to work with. And the leadership at both the schools, we really just can't say enough about the principals and the assistant principals. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, it, but it really is, you know, it's, it's taken some, a little extra work on their part and they've taken a risk with this and um, I, I think you guys will be very satisfied and, and it is impressive to see the, the administration like that working, reaching out to, to make a big change and for big results. So thank you. I, one other thing, have you reached, uh, have you approached or, or contacted the uh, the Big Give project or the, the female counterpart to that? I think it's Midland 100 um, and presented this idea to them. Uh, quarterly they um, donate a certain sum of money to a worthwhile organization and I think 
uh, you guys would fit right into that criteria. Um, and it may, I, I think it would be really worth your time. Um, and, and for what it's worth, as an aside, uh, this may seem like a small amount, but if you guys can raise $500 in the next two or three weeks, I would be happy to match that to help you out. Well, thank you very much, and I'm sure we can do that. I'll be Good. Right back with you. Um, <laughs> if, if, you if you're, if you're going to stick around for the meeting, I, I can touch base with you afterwards, or, or uh, Mr. Sherrill has my contact information. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And we will approach the big give, and we are happy to say we were recipients from the Midland 100 Club earlier this year. Wonderful. Good. For our exposure program. So that's off the list for a few years, but they were very generous in their support. If anyone else has any other funding suggestions, please do <laughs> let me know. Anybody wants to just match whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ma ma that's matches are good. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Yep. great to see. Mike, I'll turn it back to you. We have an administrative appointment this evening. Um, Mid uh, Midland Dow High School had a assistant principal position open and um, we had the administrative personnel committee interview and they uh, unanimously selected um, Matt Samaki and Matt is here with us this evening along with his wife I see who is an employee of the district as well I found out this evening. And so uh, I'll give Matt an opportunity to introduce, introduce himself to the board if you'd like to come up to the mic, Matt. Good evening. After growing up in Midland as the son of two educators, Jim and Ann Samaki, I look back fondly for everything Midland Public uh, Schools provided for my family and for me. As a 1998 graduate of H.H. Dow High School, I feel Midland Public Schools gave me the skills and foundation necessary to grow academically and progress professionally. As a professional, I have been a teacher for the past 10 years, nine of which were with Freeland High School, where I taught AP U.S. History, Government, Economics, and Psychology, and assumed leadership roles as a teacher and as a coach. I'm very grateful to the Freeland Community School District who, pro who provided me with the opportunities to grow as an educator. I had countless wonderful experiences and interactions with the community of Freeland. However, now I will return home for the next step in my career as an educator in the field of administration. As an admin administrator, I look forward to working with the community, students, staff, administrators, and school board in whatever capacity necessary. I plan to demonstrate to Midland my leadership, technological, curriculum, and inter interpersonal skills to the best of my ability. I will take what skills I currently have and continue to develop them to be, become the best educator I can be. I cannot thank everyone involved in this process enough for this opportunity. My family cannot thank you enough either. My wife, Juliette Samaki, who teaches at Plymouth Elementary, and our two daughters, Genevieve and Josephine, are excited to now all be a part of Midland Public Schools for now and in the future. Thank you. Any Welcome. questions or comments to Matt before we move into uh approval of the uh, appointment. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, go ahead, yes. Ben. In 1998, when you were graduating from high school at Dow, did you have any inkling that you'd be back as an administrator someday? This has been quite a surreal experience, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Um, no, I can honestly answer that no. No, and it, it, I, it's wonderful, and I am looking forward to September 23rd and walking back into the building as an administrator and um, making a a, a great career change. Thank you. Any others? I'll avoid the temptation of saying welcome back, Cotter, uh, <laughs> but but I didn't. And and second, I'll apologize in advance if I call you Jim on more than one occasion. <laughs> and and lastly, you are much brighter and better looking than he was. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll enjoy that. <laughs> or is. <laughs> That's my comment. Any others? I'll take a motion to accept the appointment. So moved. Support. Move, moved by Dr. Kaminsky, support by Mr. McFarland. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Welcome aboard. I may have showed my age when I made the welcome back Cotter That's comment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Your students don't have a clue what that means. You'll have to send them to YouTube. <laughs> Okay, then we'll move on to there. I'll hand it over to uh, Ms. Klein. Yes, and this is the second part of a proposal 
that uh, has carried over from last year. We began talking about this in the Finance, Facilities, and Operations Committee meetings, and you took the first bit of action when you approved the salary letter in June, and that was to improve the wage rates for substitute bus drivers. We began discussions about the difficulties we were having keeping and having enough substitute bus drivers, and so the Transportation Department came up with a two-pronged suggestion. The first was improving the wages for the subs themselves. The second was to provide a bit of an incentive for drivers to uh, perhaps be a little more careful in their use of sick days and to reward those who over time have accumulated sick days and have not created a, a need for substitutes. So we bring to you a proposal to amend the transportation handbook, which is officially referenced in how Midland schools work, uh, to add the language, if a regular driver has accumulated a minimum of 60 days, and we're referring there to sick days, the driver may use them for winter break, spring break, snow days, and professional development days. Drivers will not be allowed to drop below 45 sick days. A maximum of seven days may be used within the period of September through May. Continued eligibility for use of sick days in this manner is contingent on maintaining a minimum of 45 sick days. Uh, this does reward those drivers who have accumulated sick days, and you may not be aware that as hourly school year employees, they are only paid on days in which school is in session. And so extended break periods, particularly in the winter time around Christmas, if we have snow days on either side of that, can lead to a very long period of time when drivers receive absolutely no payment at all. And so this will allow them to perhaps spread their, their pay a little more evenly through the school year. Uh, we've met with the drivers, made them aware of this, and they, they're also in support of it, very happy to see it move forward. So we would recommend approval and amending the handbook. Board's pleasure. I move we accept action item 5.3, MTS bus driver compensation benefits. Support, support by uh, Vice President Baker, moved by uh, Treasurer Branstad. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Linda. We'll move into finance. Uh, turn it over to uh, Treasurer Branstadt for a report from the FFO committee meeting. All right. We met last Tuesday, the first day of school. And um, besides our committee, Dave Youngstrom from Yo and Yo is also here. Um, he reviewed the draft of the annual financial statements and auditor's report of June 30th, 2013. The opinion is unmodified with no findings, and this is an audit terminology change. Um, what used to be known as an unqualified opinion in the past is now called an unmodified opinion, meaning that the auditors had to make no modifications to the financial statements. So um, a fo full report will be made at the September 23rd, 2013 Board of Ed meeting. Um, following the general presentation, the staff excused themselves to provide um, the three board members on the committee um, a chance to meet privately with him. Let's see, Mrs. Klein presented information from Drune Law Firm regarding permissible election dates and deadlines. Mr. Shara indicated that the area superintendents recommend holding the MC ESA Enhancement Millage Renewal election on Tuesday, February 25th. MPS is weighing whether to use this opportunity to also renew its own operating millages as well, all of which expire in May of 2015. Doing so would significantly reduce the cost of an election. Legal counsel has suggested that we also consider whether it would be prudent to have a separate request for a tax rate somewhat higher than 18 mils. This would provide protection in the event that local property tax values increased at a greater rate than the rate of inflation, preventing the district from levying the full 18 mils. Uh, let's see, the group reviewed the requirements for qualifying for the best practice incentive, which has been included in the 2013-14 budget. Uh, new this year is a requirement to include additional financial information on a dashboard. And MPS hopes to use a state-approved tool called um, Munentrix to meet these additional requirements. And the next time we'll meet will be Tuesday, October 1st. Any questions of Ms. Branstad? 
Seeing none, we'll move on to 6.2, and I'll hand it back to Linda. Yes, it's gift time. Uh, we have gifts that have been received and processed, totaling $9,357 from the Chestnut Hill PTO, the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, uh, the Chef Chestnut Hill Administrative Account, and then the Aaron and Esther Oberlin Gift Fund. And this is a fund that I, I'd like to recognize them for supporting this for many, many years. They have a particular warm spot for Midland High School, and even though they no longer have children in school, I believe they've all graduated from Midland Public Schools, they still feel very strongly that they'd like to support the programs, and so every year for the past number of years, they've made a gift in support of at-risk students in order to promote a positive outcomes program at Midland High School. Uh, we do have one, two gifts that require <coughs> your acceptance because they each exceed $5,000. Uh, the Chestnut Hill PTO is purchasing some key card readers for the building at a total of $7,300. And the Plymouth PTO makes a large blanket annual gift rather than numerous small gifts through the year to cover supplies, the classroom magazines, field trips, books for the teachers, media center, and the school office and that totals $17,204.50. We <coughs> seek your approval of those two gifts. I'll accept a motion on 6.3. I will move that we graciously accept 6.3. Support. Support. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much to all these organizations. Your support is amazing. I reiterate, to echo what everybody else has said. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The, the generosity in this community just uh, continues to impress me in this town. It's fantastic. With that, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you for the donations. With this, we'll move on to human resources, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Verlindi. Thank you for information. The board and the staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Mary Jean Bobolik, who passed away August 23, 2013. She began her employment with the Middle Public Schools in 1959 as an elementary teacher at State Street School, right next door. She retired with 29 years of service with MPS in 1988, and she was the recipient of the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Award for Excellence in 1970. Oh, wow. Our sympathies to her family, and thanks for what she did for us all those years. Yes. Uh, moving on through the agenda, uh, you'll see a list of correspondence to and from the board and a listing of our future meetings, which for the balance of this year are regularly scheduled meetings at 7 o'clock here. And with that, I'll take a motion to go into closed session to discuss a confidential attorney-client privilege issue. So move. Support. Moved by Dr. Kaminsky, support by Mr. McFarland. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The, 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 oh, do we need a roll call vote to go out? Session. No. I don't think so. I think we're good. Um, with that, I'll announce to the public when we come back, we will just uh, go into our study discussion period where we make comments amongst board members, and that'll be the remainder of the agenda for the evening. So I'll have to ask the, the room to be cleared. I will tell you this will be very, very brief. So uh, those who wish to stay around, it won't be very long.
we are back to open session, we'll let the uh, audience return to their seats before we begin the, the rest of the agenda. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that before, right? <laughs> Already, I think everybody's returned who's going to return. We'll now move to the study discussion session, which is the last item on the agenda. Uh, I'll start to my right with Lynn. Okay. I'll just say it's nice to be back. There's lots going on in the schools, and you can kind of feel the enthusiasm and uh, the excitement. So I'm looking forward to the, all the activities and the sporting events and band and music. So um, I hope everyone has a great year. And uh, once again, congratulations to Matt Samash, who I always think I'm feeling older, but Matt graduated and put with my oldest son, and uh, they were opponents on the football field for six years. So, wow, seeing him as a principal now, um, I guess I am getting older. So, <laughs> congratulations! It'll be exciting for him to be back. I, I know at, at Dow High School. Uh, thank you to the Rock. Um, what a great partnership! We know that the middle school. Um, uh, will be very supportive and the students are excited to be there. It's a, a wonderful program as, as we heard tonight. And um, welcome to all our new staff members. I was out of town so I was not able to uh, welcome you at the, at the breakfast, but um, we are glad to have you on board. Yvonne. I have nothing really to add. Just I want to say congratulations to Mr. Samaki and wish him well in his new position. John. Okay, that quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you to the, uh, the donors and the guests of the district. It's always appreciated, and uh, we're off to looks like another great start. I know that list at the end of the year is really at a, a very impressive level, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, with the FFO report, I know we're going to go over at our next board meeting the results of the audit, but um, I think it has been year after year after year of no findings on an audit, and thanks to the people in our finance department uh, for making sure that that happens. And uh, that's, that's just exciting. Shows the strength of the district. Um, and then congratulations to Matt Samaki, his appointment at Dow High School. Thank you. On to you. All right. Well, I think you guys have said a lot of it. But um, I loved hearing the presentation on the rock. And I think it's another reminder to all of us. Um, so many people in the community are so generous to Midland Public Schools. And we see that. We approve that. But they're also so generous to other things in the community that directly impact our students that we don't see every time we come here on a weekly basis and what a what a great program to offer um, kids and other than that it looks like we're off to a great year um, teachers haven't disappointed we've been doing a lot of homework at our house already so <laughs> there was no break in time so um, and that's good to hear I, I'm, I'm not complaining personally <laughs> um, anyway no it seems like it's gonna be a great year so that is it well, it's good to be back. I feel like I've been away for a little while. Um, adding to the strength of the district, uh, I think the number of teachers and professionals that we've hired, um, I missed the meeting as well because I was uh, unavailable. Uh, it's just exciting. I mean, it's great to see all these new people coming into the district uh, to take care of our kids. Um, I was really impressed with the Rock. I think it's a wonderful program, and I would encourage everybody to try and support it uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, and really, that's, that's all I have for, for tonight. So I'll, with that, I'll pass it off to Jerry. OK. Um, my biggest comment is, again, thanks to The Rock. And uh, Scott, I'll be lining up the match there. All right. Mm -hmm. well, one other thing, I wanted to uh, just publicly thank him for her service and wish her well yep. in her future endeavors. Yep. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for what appears to be a smooth, but more importantly, safe start of our, our new school years, at least to my knowledge. Uh, we haven't had any car pedestrian incidents, and uh, I'm very thankful to our community to keep their eyes open because uh, kids are still darting out and about and will be for nine months. So thank you very much for that. So did you say you're going to match the full 500? Yes, I did. Right on. You got, you got a got full verbal commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Mike. Um, I'm going to go through the fighter letters fairly quick because you have touched on so many of them that we talked about through the last two weeks. Um, Opening meeting, I thought, went extremely well. Jerry opened it with a welcome back, and we had uh, Dr. Delinsky, who I thought did a great job uh, speaking to him. We also gave an update with staff on where we are with the IBPYP program. 
um, as well as problem-based learning, a project-based learning where we're moving through, through that process as well. So that was good for the staff to know the progress that we've made. During that opening week, our bus drivers, administrative assistants, and our paraprofessionals also were trained, and I, and I got a lot of good feedback on the training from there as well. Um, I shared with you what, uh, an email from Blake Sobel about some of the technology upgrades, and if you haven't had a chance, I really found the MPS YouTube channel to be potentially pretty powerful in, in using that, and so uh, take a look at that channel if you get a chance. Um, the IBAT team on IB has met. And so um, we are looking at how do we sustain ourselves with the IB diploma program. And there's some um, proposals that uh, Mr. Cooper will work through and potentially bring to you at some point on, on that piece of it, as well as the progress made with the elementaries moving forward in phase one this year um, in, in the PYP program. And the middle school program is um, kind of regaining ground and ready to go back and take a look at the middle school. And I think Bob shared with you last board meeting that um, there's a kind of a new MYP program out there that potentially will help us move forward with that piece. The Midland Tomorrow marketing plan that Mr. Ellinger uh, was working on and kind of handed it off as we have gone, uh, we've made some pretty good gains on that. Uh, I met with Linda Coglin from that group uh, last week with Cindy and we got some new ideas and some new approaches but we're obviously making some good gains. The Monday communique she loves and so that was a piece of, wasn't something we did uh, to meet that but it certainly uh, fit in very well into the marketing plan as we were going forward. And uh, let's see, new assistant principal we talked about and I also welcome Matt and very excited. I, I was kidding the team that brought the recommendation forward. Um, I certainly had no problem with the social studies former coach um, <laughs> turning to the district. <laughs> kind of felt familiar to me, if you've met those of you. Um, last week, we, or yes, the end of last week, we also met with the Her Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow Foundation um, to finish some unfinished work from last spring. Um, Linda Lipset, Luann Bezinger, and Bob Cooper did a great job of, um, it was more of a discussion than a presentation to them, and did a great job of some clarifying questions and answers for them. And so I think we'll hear good things from them as we go forward, we certainly hope. Um, the Leadership Midland does a tour, and so um, it'll be my first experience, and that's this week, and so we're very excited about hosting th them, and what a great opportunity to show off our schools and the good things we do. Um, I also will be completing, Carol left me uh, a note on, in regards to the Dow Community Gives and applying for the $75,000 piece of that. It's due in October, and so I'm working on that piece to, to make sure we stay on top of that as we go. Student enrollment class size, as you know, we've uh, watching those very closely, and they really, uh, ha we had a lot of movement in the last uh, week or so, but I wanted to um, give Gary a kudos here. He watched that daily. And so he was pulling these reports daily and working with the principals and trying to manage those class sizes. And um, enrollment and class size is just about where we had originally planned and expected. It's not perfect in any manner uh, and during these budget times, but it's certainly where it stayed in the boundaries where we were looking for them to be. And on uh, the FFO committee, uh, um, I think you said it well, Angela, and what a great job Linda and Carol do there. And um, that came out strongly from um, Dave Youngstrom. So great job, Linda. And that's all I have. Thank you. Um, and Roger, I'll make it worth your while for staying. I, I was remiss at the beginning with uh, Kim's resignation to uh, say we will begin the process that's ordained by statute and by our policies to fill the seat, appoint the seat within 30 days up to the next election. And uh, we'll be dusting that off and uh, you'll be hearing more about that as we go forward. Any other comments? Was that worth it, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> With that, uh, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>